From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Good morning and welcome to Montana This Morning on this Monday, March 11th. I'm Augusta McDonald. More than 600 students attending public schools here in Billings are considered homeless. As Q2's Charlie Kleps shows us, the district has a new facility to help these kids as much as possible. In just a couple of months, those students will be able to come here to the newly formed Family Resource Center located in downtown Billings at the Lincoln Center to find the resources that they need. For majority of students, schools are a place for learning and growth. We're identifying more homeless families and students than we have in the past. But for the nearly 600 Billings homeless students identified by School District 2, these classrooms also serve as a safe haven. We're seeing that increase from, from previous years though. I mean, um, you know, three before COVID, it was, you know, in the 300s. It's a number SD2 Student Services Director Kevin Kirkman has seen steadily rise in the past five years, an alarming trend that has the district's full attention. So this will be a food pantry. Kirkman and others in the district have been hard at work establishing this, the district's first ever family resource center. The goal of, of the family resource center is to provide that support. We're not saying that we're going to be able to do everything, but we want to be able to support our family so that kids can get to school. The center will be a hub for these families where they can receive donations like shoes, clothes, or school supplies, but also a safe space where they can get help from SD2 community liaisons. We want to make sure that every student is receiving a quality education and that they're um, given that opportunity. The space isn't ready yet. As you can see from the boxes, there's some moving parts, but Kirkman says the plan is to be open next month. Our main goal is getting students to school um, and getting them to class. A new resource that hopes to change the lives of students in Billings. If there's something that we can do for that family or, or support that we can provide, that's what we want to do. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. Thank you so much, Charlie, for that story. And of course, homeless students can look a lot of different ways. Sometimes they're crashing on the couch at grandma's house while mom and dad stay elsewhere. They're sleeping in the car. Um, so really important that that resource is available now. I can't believe that number has doubled since before yeah, COVID. That's crazy, yeah. Yeah, really, and, things and are expensive, housing's expensive. Yeah, I'm glad that resource is, is there. That, uh, um, a lot of those kids, those meals, is the only meals they get are at school. Yep, the only ones they get are at school. Oh, Okay. So important, we'll keep following that. And we're looking at a slightly different shift in our weather pattern this week. Yeah, boy, it was beautiful over was the weekend. Gorgeous. Hopefully everybody had a chance to get outdoors. Now we're going to see a bit of an unsettled pattern all the way through at least the middle of the week. Lower elevation rain. Some of us could get a little bit of snow. And then the, on the mountains, so definitely a chance we could get some snow. In fact, we have a couple shots of energy coming through. A weak short wave today. And then a split trough with the jet stream just kind of splits off just a bit. And we'll catch the northern end of that, it looks like. So the mountains, uh, Tuesday into Wednesday, that's when we could see a hefty amount of snow coming into play. And we'll show you that in just a bit. But uh, look at that. Yesterday, a good 16 degrees above the norm. Our high of 63 turned out to be a gorgeous day. Uh, our overnight low, about 12 degrees above average. Average uh, hitting 37. Top gust yesterday of 30 miles an hour. Uh, overnight, we've seen some really strong winds in Livingston. The good news is that has really tapered off. Uh, still somewhat strong with gusts up to 30 miles an hour, but the advisory that was in a uh, place, they went ahead and just canceled it out. But still kind of windy this morning, so please, in those areas, Livingston tonight, uh, be careful if you drive a high profile vehicle. Moisture totals, well, we're starting to see ourselves dig a hole for just a bit this month, but we could make some of that moisture up the next couple of days uh, for the year, pacing slightly ahead. Of course, the snow totals, we don't even want to talk about that. We just want the moisture. It looks like the snow that's coming in uh, may add to the snowpack over the next couple of days. So that's really good news. 40 right now at the airport feels like 35. Winds out the south at about 7 miles an hour. Uh, pretty mild this morning. Temperatures in the 30s and 40s. Not too bad. Uh, and even though it may not be as warm the next couple of days, it's still going to be above average. We'll take a look at that. And will this weekend be nice? We'll take a look at that too coming up. All right, Miller, thank you so much. Yes. Much to come. And now let's head to Roundup, where community members uh, are on high alert after claims someone is poisoning dogs. Cricket Nichols believes her Chihuahua Shasta died after potentially eating meatballs she found in her backyard. She claims the food was filled with bluish green crystals. Nichols' cousin, Heaven Benson, also recently had to put down her 14 year old healer mix. She says her vet told her the dog overdosed. To whoever is doing this, just why, you know, why would you put somebody else through this pain? Because I f literally feel like I lost my kid. We reached out to the Muscle Shell County Sheriff's Office. They tell us they've not received any reports of the animals being poisoned and say it's a crime that can be very difficult to prove. 
And in national news this morning, the number of migrants attempting to enter the United States is expected to continue to increase this month after record numbers last year. Border Patrol encountered nearly 2.5 million migrants in fiscal year 2023. That's an all-time high. Our Joe St. George looks into why the numbers are climbing. In 2024, the border matters, but unlike past border issues, this election year is not about redefining boundaries. It's about who's allowed in, who is kept out, and what about the people who are already here? Gallup asked Americans in February, what do you think is the most important problem facing the country today? 28% said immigration. It was number one. Unlike past elections where candidates may have limited records on the issue, this year the differences between the leading candidates are well documented. I will not demonize immigrants saying they are poison in the blood of our country. They want open borders. And open borders are going to destroy our country. Border question number one, what to do with people seeking asylum at the southern border? Remember, federal law permits asylum to people facing persecution. What happens before or after is where the policy comes in. Former President Trump enacted a remain in Mexico policy while in office, which instructed thousands of asylum seeking migrants at the southern border to wait in Mexico while they await immigration hearings. President Joe Biden canceled remain in Mexico and has called it inhumane in the past. Human Rights First reports that when the policy was in place, there was at least 1,544 publicly reported cases of kidnapping, murder, torture and rape and other violent attacks against people returned to Mexico. Border question number two, how to prevent migrants from seeking asylum at the southern border in the first place? President Biden has encouraged the use of a mobile app to help make the asylum seeking process more orderly. He instructed Vice President Kamala Harris to work with private companies to improve economic conditions in Central America. Former President Trump, when he was in office, worked to restrict asylum seekers from wanting to come here too. He issued travel bans and raised the threshold for what conditions would qualify for asylum, and then enacted a zero tolerance policy for those who attempted to enter the U.S. illegally. An Inspector General report from 2021 found that that policy resulted in over 3,000 children being separated from their parents. Finally, border question number three, how to improve physical security along the southern border and what to do with the migrants already here. Former President Trump built over 450 miles of the border wall when he was in office and he wants to build more. President Biden has been largely critical of that, pushing for billions of dollars worth of border investments instead. Former President Trump wants the largest deportation task force ever assembled if he's elected. Meanwhile, the Biden administration deported 142,000 last year and has spoke of the need to find a pathway to citizenship for some in the past. Joe St. George, Scripps News, Washington. Joe, thank you. Immigration was also top of mind for former President Trump and President Biden during dueling campaign events in Georgia over the weekend. They both addressed the killing of a Georgia nursing student, allegedly by an undocumented migrant. President Biden expressed regret for referring to the suspect as a, quote, illegal during last week's State of the Union address, following some criticism from some in his party. Trump later bashed Biden's comments. Both candidates are expected to gain enough delegates in primary contests to secure their party's nomination this week. Meanwhile, as Muslims around the world begin the holy month of Ramadan, there's still no ceasefire in the war between Israel and Hamas. This comes as a U.S. Army ship carrying equipment to help get aid into Gaza heads toward the Mediterranean. CBS's Naomi Ruckham explains how tensions surrounding this conflict are rising both abroad and at home. As promised by the White House, help is on the way for the people of Gaza. A U.S. military vessel is sailing to the region, carrying equipment to build a temporary pier to speed up the delivery of aid. It's a desperate situation. Food, medicine, everything needed, they're badly needed, and it's needed now. On the ground in Gaza, the lack of resources, traditional food especially, extra prevalent, with preparations for the normally festive holy month of Ramadan underway. The push for aid coming as President Biden signals a growing division between himself and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. He's hurting Israel more than helping Israel. It's contrary to what Israel stands for. And I think it's a big mistake. Netanyahu is also facing pressure from within Israel. In Tel Aviv, families of those still held captive in Gaza are pleading with both the Israeli and American governments to bring their loved ones home. To put as much pressure on them to reach an agreement, to reach a hostage deal, 
now. The conflict even took hold of the Academy Awards last night. <laughs> Protesters gathered outside the Dolby Theater, blocking roads and slightly delaying the start of the ceremony as attendees arrived. Throughout the show, some celebrities wore red pins calling for a ceasefire. Naomi Ruckham, CBS News. Once the American aid ship arrives in the region, it could be weeks before the port is in place and aid is flowing in. Israeli officials say they welcome the plan and would perform security checks on those deliveries. New alarm for Haiti as the U.S. military over the weekend airlifted non-essential embassy personnel out of the country. A state of emergency that was supposed to last three days has been extended until the end of the month as powerful gangs try to overtake the Caribbean nation's government. Haiti is teetering on the brink of collapse amid growing calls for Prime Minister Ariel Henry to step down. Back here in Montana, of course, wildlife conservation continues to be a huge emphasis in the state. And the new licensing year for Fish, Wildlife and Parks brings a new requirement for anybody recreating on state lands this year. MTN's Chet Lehman tells us that maintaining these sites is now a shared expense by all users. March 1st marked the beginning of the new licensing year for the Montana Department of Fish, Wildlife and Parks. It also marked the beginning of year two of a requirement that says all people over the age of 12 using fishing access sites, wildlife management areas, or other DNRC land in the state of Montana buy a conservation license to help pay for maintenance. Uh, what this does is it generates uh, funding for the maintenance, upkeep, and care of these facilities that see really a, a lot of use throughout the year. That requirement went in last year. Up to that point, the only funds available for upkeep came from those who bought hunting and fishing licenses fairly small group of the actual population who use these sites on a yearly basis. We're seeing all kinds of recreation at uh, these state sites. Uh, anything from floating and boating to uh, picnicking and, and all these things uh, that, uh, that do, you know, have, uh, you know, take, take a toll on, on the maintenance depending on how many people come in and, and use these sites. FWP has made meeting this requirement pretty simple and inexpensive. If you're getting a hunting or fishing license, you're already taking care of this requirement. If you don't participate in either of those activities, but still plan to use these lands, it's a simple procedure you can complete on your phone. It's really easy to be able to obtain that license. You can go online to our website at fwp.mt.gov. You click on the buy and apply uh, link and, and uh, you'll be able to get a, a conservation license uh, from your phone, from your, from your house, or if you want to come in and talk to us, you can come down to uh, fit the Fish, Wildlife and Parks office in Bozeman. Conservation license will remain valid until the end of February of next year. And again, as a requirement for anyone over the age of 12 using any of these state lands, for any activity. Sitting on a picnic table at the Cameron Bridge Fishing Access Site near Belgrade with my valid conservation license, Chet Lehman, MTN News. Chet, thank you. And a local nonprofit and animal shelter is celebrating the success of its most recent fundraiser, one of the cutest and most chaotic yoga classes you'll ever see. Here's a look inside Red's Dog Rescue's puppy yoga class. 50 people showed up to stretch and tap into the health benefits of this ancient workout, but more importantly, play with puppies. It's just a way to get people out to know, to, to learn about us, to socialize the puppies. And of course, fundraiser, just a good way to just make a couple extra bucks. Res Dog Rescue helps stray dogs on Montana reservations. Man, they're cute. They spay and neuter dogs, leave food out for strays, and rescue puppies and injured dogs.